Hey guys, it's Adam, aka Swimming Bird, and we're back again for this week's snapshot. This is 12W40A for Thursday, October 4th. And there's a lot of little things in this one, but a lot of them are really cool. So I'm just going to get right into it and talk about this stuff. I'm pretty excited. Now, the first thing you're going to notice here, I found this really quickly, actually, surprisingly. This is the new Witch Hunt. This is where the. Uh, not witch hunt, witch hut. <laughs> this is where the witch is going to spawn. It's kind of this elevated uh, wooden cabin. It looks like it's going to be kind of hard to get into, and a lot of people are not that happy with the design. Now, we still have time before 1.4 for them to fix this, but it kind of reminds me of like the Jungle Temple and stuff in that they maybe should have crowdsourced the design a little more. It looks like there's a glitch with the cauldron and the crafting table being up on the ceiling. She's got a nice little mushroom in a flower pot. I like that touch, but... In general, it's not all that interesting, I think. Th these are going to spawn in uh, swamps randomly, and this is actually going to be where the witch spawns. I can set it to night, and maybe we'll get lucky and a witch will actually spawn there. Now, if you already have a server map and you're worried because you don't you don't have room to generate like witch huts and stuff, don't worry too much because witches will naturally spawn in swamps on occasion, so you will still see them, luckily. And another feature here uh, that you'll notice immediately is that spawn uh, s slimes actually spawn at night in swamps now so if you can't find a slime chunk you can actually go to a swamp it gives another draw to come here not just for the witch but to get these slimes and slime balls are going to be a lot easier to get now so that's pretty cool I like uh, ha how they have uh, unique factors for a lot of the biomes I hope they continue to keep doing that so this is the witch hut. Hopefully, I'm not too happy with it, but hopefully that'll it'll get better. If you want to see this, this the seed is just hut with a capital H. Who's this little guy down here? We got a skeleton in full gold. That's pretty cool. Okay, so what other stuff did they do? I'm gonna set time back to day. Uh, dinner bone. Here's the process of dinner bone's lighting engine tries. Now he added the new lighting engine, and then as you probably saw in my second snapshot the day after, he removed it because of a lot of lag and stuff and now he added it back in but then out of frustration he took it back out <laughs> for lag and other reasons you know and he said I'm just gonna push it back to 1.5 for sure this time so I think that's the end of the lighting engine for 1.4 <laughs> but he kind of flip flopped back and forth he's just very frustrated with it which I can see because he wants a good lighting engine in the game but he also doesn't want it to lag for people so there's that now I can show you the new beacon texture and I'll grab some iron or something here to lay it uh, lay it down. This is actually the fourth version of the beacon texture that has been put in the game. I like this better than the third one, the one that had the weird kind of ender dragon stream, but I don't necessarily like it better than the second one. The block looks okay. Now this is a pretty, it's like more of a solid stream than when it used to be light, and it looks pretty cool. It looks good from far away. I just really liked the like lightning just kind of illuminated effect that we could use for spotlights, so I wish they would go back to that. Although if this is what we settle on for the beacon, I, I'll be happy with that. It's still pretty cool. Uh, what other stuff? Now, doors, trap doors, levers, and buttons. If you're used to having a, uh, a door and then just punching it to get it open, you actually can't do that anymore. You can't do it in creative normally, but I can, I can show you here in survival uh, that you can't actually punch a door to get through it anymore. It just hits it. Uh, you have to right-click for doors, trap doors, levers, and buttons to do that now. So uh, that's just a change because they wanted to standardize the way a lot of the redstone stuff works. So it's just uh, if you're used to punching the doors open, then that's, you're probably not going to be happy with that. But that's just how it is now. Uh, redstone changes. There's actually going to be a ton of those that are bug fixes. But that's actually being pushed off to 1.5 as well because Jeb realized that a lot of these are going to break people's redstone stuff. So I think they're giving people more time to realize that and maybe rework their redstone stuff. But it's also a complicated thing, so they're going to push that off to 1.5. But it's going to be bug, bug fixes with redstone timing, ma mainly. Now, inventory management. This is really cool. Now, say you want to uh, put this redstone lamp, you want to shift-click it to, to get it in your inventory, uh, which you can normally do like if it's in here. I'll do it with the door. Now you shift click and it goes in your inventory. But say you don't want it in the first slot. Now if you hold down, say I'll put it in the fifth slot, you hold down the number five and just go over it. Or yeah, or, sorry, you push number five when you're over it. So I just push five, bam, it's in the fifth slot. And now if I want to actually change this to a different slot, say I want slot two, just push two over it. You can actually dictate where these are going to go in your inventory, which is really cool. 
So I'm just going to be like, ma'am, I want this in the second slot. There you go. <laughs> so when you're getting items out of a chest, it's going to be a lot easier to, to have your layout without having to like shift click in a weird order. And speaking of shift clicking, clicking uh, you might have noticed in creative, normally if I shift click, it would destroy an item. But now it actually works and puts it in my inventory like normal. And I can put on my armor and stuff without having to worry about it just destroying stuff like it would before. So that's pretty cool. That's all inventory stuff that's new. Now this is the thing that I'm pretty excited to show you guys. This is uh, NBT tags, which these were in the game before, but they let you edit items. And uh, the new version of this is uh, in the snapshot is you can edit the name and the lore of the item. Now I have three items here that I can show you. And they each have, this looks like a normal enchanted sword, right? But I actually went in and edited it. This is Excalibur. This is Dredgery's uh, sword that's possessed by a cat, if you haven't seen Curse of the Pumpkin Prince. Uh, and I also gave it a fire aspect. I tried to dye it because someone else uh, showed that you can dye items different colors, but I could not get that to work. And I put some lore that's in the purple down there. Legend, it's a legendary sword, and it hungers for milk because it's got the soul of a cat in it. Um, <laughs> but it is a fire sword with a level that you normally can't get. So this is this is stuff for match, uh, map makers for adventure maps to be able to do, and that's a pretty powerful sword right there. <laughs> but um, they added this so that you can add like custom items in there for people. Like this has a cool text. I changed the text to gold up there, and then also I have this. This is a pumpkin knight helm for the pumpkin knights. Only the bravest of cowards can wear this. And you can put it on your head. <laughs> but yeah, as you can see, I changed the text to red for that and gold for Excalibur. And last, this is the default color that you'll get white if you don't do any color edit for it. And this is just, I just renamed the uh, the invisibility potion ninja juice. So, uh, and then I put a little ninja turtles thing at the bottom there for the lore. But yeah, cool little stuff like that that you can change. Let's put on this helmet and then... There we go. <laughs> that looks pretty cool. It's so weird. My head's not like moving. Um, but yeah, you can go in and uh, you actually have to have like an editor to do this. It took me a little bit to figure out how to do it. It's a little complicated, but if you're going to make an adventure map, this is a really cool way to make unique loot for that. So I'm really excited about that. And speaking of my fire sword, uh, fire spread has been nerfed a little bit. This was mainly an issue if you play on hard mode because fire was made to spread almost infinitely again. Uh, pretty much infinitely if there's enough stuff for it to burn but they nerfed it a little so that fire won't just spread an insane amount right now I think I have it on hard yeah and I can just light one of these trees on fire or something you can see how fast it spreads but it's not as bad as it was uh, in the previous snapshots but it's still on hard is gonna spread pretty fast so you gotta be careful if you have a wooden house uh, just like that popular video <laughs> okay so that's mostly it there's a ton of bug fixes though and this is actually some of the stuff I'm the most excited about because one of the bugs they fixed is the teleporting pets and I hated that like uh, someone would walk into a chunk where I had left like my wolf or my cat sitting and it would teleport all the way to me like no matter how far I was and that was crazy and supposedly they fixed that so that is super exciting and they also fixed efficiency gear breaking blocks under you when you use it uh, a bunch of the nether lag has been fixed painting placement is better AI now won't just try to jump over cobblestone walls like they used to with fences stuff like that lots of good bu bug fixes in this one and uh, other than that there's one last thing I want to show you I'm gonna hop over to another world to show you that so I'll be right back okay so the last change this week is that if you make a super flat world now you can you can customize it obviously but if you use the preset overworld as you can see up here a ton of stuff will now spawn and let's just generate this world and I'll show you uh, you can spawn f super flat worlds but have a lot of the structures in the normal game uh, for example there's pumpkins grass flowers trees mine shafts dungeons strongholds lakes desert wells ravines jungle and desert temples and or underground so if you like playing on a super flat world you can actually play a normal minecraft game on here and not have to worry about using creative or cheats to get all the items that you need which is pretty cool if i dig down here I i'll the layers are, pro are pretty simple, but look, we found some coal already, so there you go. This is a totally viable Minecraft world to play in now. So if you hate hills and different biomes, then this is the thing for you. Anyways, thank you for watching, guys. A lot of cool stuff this week. It's a lot of little things, but I think it's going to make a big difference in 1.4.
They already said they're going to release a B version of this tomorrow to fix some of the glitches with mining and stuff, so I probably will do a video on that too if there's enough significant stuff for me to do that. But thank you guys for watching. Leave the like, uh, leave a <laughs> click the like button if you enjoyed this. It definitely helps me out. And uh, I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.